Well, hello there, viewers, and the viewer vast as I, Captain of the Steers, got myself a lovely cup of tea right here. Something I haven't done is hit play on my old Winamp. Let's get some music in the background, people. There we go. Beautiful. Right, I'm going to have a sip of this, and then we're going to be talking about No Man's Sky. Yeah, not so much on... Well, it is it news? I don't know. You can decide. Hold on. Let's have a sip of this. Right, oh, people. So today is the 15th, the 15th of February. Let's jump on over into the Twitch universe, shall we, people, firstly? I think so. Here we go. Chikapow. Right, there you go. I'm on upon the Twitter screen. Now, Sean Murray has retweeted out a tweet that he tweeted the other day. So hopefully you've got your head around that. Basically, he tweeted out this image of a little person standing on one of these exotic biomes. Now, towards the end of this video, I'm going to be hitting up this tab and what I think this might be if I was to put on my speculation hat. Yes. But for now, I'm just going to go over what I think this actually means. Because I actually uh, retweeted this out myself. There you go. There's his emoji. Is that an emoji for an update or just Valentine's and a load of hearts? With no Steam Depot changes, no sales. Think if there is an update, it's just for PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2. But at No Man's Sky, if you want uh, No Man's Sky to be top of the Steam charts in 2023, can't wait to see what content is coming. Now, there was a couple of comments that got placed onto here. So, yeah. Uh, stay tuned. Yes, Xbox currently has a small sale. Oh, really? Didn't know that. Well, that's pretty cool. This isn't the first time, though, he posted an emoji similar to this. Yes, I know. I think it's just a love heart, but it is weird that he retweeted the same image and why that image, which we'll get to towards the end of this video, people. So there we go, we've got all this lovely stuff here, all the different sorts of tweets. Yes, the prayer emoji. Yes, you're quite right. He, he often does the praying emoji. Yeah. Cool. It feels like No Man's Sky is dead. It it does this sort of time of year, but we usually have a February update that sort of lifts everybody's feelings in the year, but I don't know whether that's on the cards, and we'll get to that in a moment. If he wasn't retweeting a post, I'd say yes. Yes, there was a retweet of a post that he did, but I think that might have some dual meaning, which we'll get to soon. Anyway... Over on the No Man's Sky Assistant app, if you haven't installed the Assistant app on your mobile device, it's very handy for multiple reasons. As I'm scrolling down here, you can see all the freaking reasons to get this, and it's free. I don't know why I'm trying to sell it to you when it's freaking free. If you haven't got it on your mobile phone, then your mobile phone is not wired to give you information and news and fun stuff to do with No Man's Sky. So go hit it up, because it might give you an idea of something else to do in game that you haven't thought of doing. And over on the No Man's Sky Assistant app, on your mobile device you can see what items are about to unlock let me just move me off of screen for a second so you can see this properly so here you can see that the current research pro progress into the aquatic colony is at 77 percent I don't have to fire up the game to see that. I can see it right here through the No Man's Sky Assistant app and track the actual progress. Heck yes, I can. And yep, the next thing in there is the Tentacle Cape. Now, Hello Games like to keep the Quicksilver store fresh with things for us to run and grind for weekends and stuff like that, or to run Quicksilver missions altogether. Considering that, you know, Switch hasn't got Quicksilver, which is another thing that I'm hoping that they bring in an update at some, time, at some point is Quicksilver stuff for Switch players but that aside once this aquatic colony is unlocked which probably is going to unlock maybe in the next 48 hours or so then it goes over to the tentacle cape now the tentacle cape the last cape that we had took two and a half weeks to unlock and i think they delayed it slightly as well so it might take a little bit longer maybe even closer to three weeks which takes us up to the first week in march so at the first week of march all of this stuff comes to an end there's no more quicksilver items for us to run for so i think there might be an update you know early march if there isn't one in february for everybody if the playstation vr2 update is just for the playstation vr VR2 and PlayStation 5 players to enjoy, then I'm wondering if we might see something early March. That way they can do all the bug fixes and anything like that that might occur for the PlayStation VR2 players and enhancements and things. So I might I'm going to put it out there that I don't think we're going to get an update for all players on all platforms in February now because the signs just aren't there. 
Normally, if there was going to be an update, we'd be looking at these steam depots, and you would at least see the internal branch have a little bit of a flutter, because they would need to test this internally inside of Hello Games' studio before they then push it out to the experimental branch, and then it goes out to the public. So I would have expected if there was to be an update in the next like week or so, at least this to have changed. Now, I'm checking this daily, and I will let you know if that changes, but right now, it, it doesn't, doesn't appear to be that there's much activity going on there, people in the view of us it really doesn't and over on the playstation vr store so this is you know playstation network you can already get the update for no man's sky and yes it's free at no extra cost a ps vr 2 update at no extra cost which is freaking great of hello games which is pretty darn awesome i am interested in playing the star wars game as well there's a couple of other titles in here that are sort of tweet my interest slightly so yeah but have a little look if you are looking to pre-order the old playstation vr2 i mean the pre-order button is right up there in the top right corner if you've got the um you know the cashola to do that in a playstation 5 why not jump into the vr universe yeah that looks quite tantalizing i wish i could right anyways now i need to change my hat over to my conspiracy sort of I don't know. Speculation helmet. There you go. Chicka boom. I could have used my tin foil one, but that's that's for extreme speculation. I, I reserve that for special occasions. This is sort of like my thinking cap, people. So going back to Sean Murray's tweet, if you look at his well, let's let's go to Sean Murray's actual Twitter, shall we, people? Here we go. Boom. And we scroll on down on the old Sean of the Murrays. So there it is there. But he did tweet this out just the other day. There it is there. And he retweeted it. Why retweet it unless he really wants our attention on it? And now he's put a heart on it. Now, he could have just put a heart on there because it was Valentine's Day. But he, he did kind of wait until it had gone past midnight. So it was no longer Valentine's Day. He tweeted this out, if he was in the UK, the morning of the 15th. Basically, the day after Valentine's Day. So it's a little bit weird. Maybe it means that they're going to be giving a bit of love to these exotic biomes. Now, I did a video based on sentinelized bosses for those biomes. Here you go. I'd hit it up. Here you go. And um, I'll make it full screen because it's not like I'm going to flag myself anytime soon, is it? Right, so here we go. Let's hit play on this. It's a video inside a video, people. I know you lucky little badgers. Okay, I'll have some tea. Well, how do that, chums? Is I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewer verse, I have a video for you, and it's an ideas video. Yep, in No Man's Sky, currently we've got these exotic planets, chums. Now, they have very limited flora and fauna on them, and they seem very generic, with not much reason to come venture here. Yeah, normally they've only got one sort of fauna type, which does make your sort of like milestone easier to get for finding all fauna on a planet. Yeah, because you've only got to find one, you can upload it and get that trophy super quick. Here you go, I'm scanning one of these creatures now. And as you can see here, they're kind of a little boring in comparison to the rest of the planet. I mean, when you first land here and you get all that creepy music, you're like, oh wow, I found something quite unique and quite special. But then you realize that it's, it's not really. I mean, you can come across these planets. I think there's about 13 different types of these exotic planets so yes you can get your milestone quicker and it's got a fauna that you've never seen before and it's quite alien looking and you pick up a trophy but that's about it there's not much else to do here get a trophy scan a fauna have a look around be slightly amazed but no other than that there's not much but what if they added bosses so on all of these exotic planets you can come here and hunt down different types of exotic bosses and maybe they could be variants of these bosses so it's not all copy and pasted and not all the same but also make it so the drops from these bosses are worthwhile in having so make sure that they're like i know module for either your exocraft, for your actual ship, or for your uh, multi-tool that you just can't buy anywhere else. So maybe the incinerator module, for example. So perhaps these boss encounters are triggered from picking up too many of the trophies on the planet, or maybe even picking up too many gravitino balls, storm crystals, or digging too deep into a planet's surface could trigger a boss on other planets as well, chumps, and not just limited to exotic planets. So I think this could encourage people to explore a bit more on these exotic planets, or come here for a bit of a challenge, you know, mind-blowing stuff, and to get nice sort of loot. Maybe come here in a party. What do you think, chumps? Is this a good idea? Add your comments in the comments area. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye again. 
thank you very much for watching. So there we go, people. I mean, that artwork by Sean Cruz was freaking tantalizing stuff, wasn't it? So if I was to have to speculate, maybe if they are to give those planets a little bit of love. I mean, those planets are the planets that have got the failed boundaries on, aren't they? So maybe you hit up the failed boundary and maybe it could beam in one of those bosses. It becomes active. Boom. You got a big boss fight. You take out that boss. You might get the chance to get something like the incinerator module or some sort of new weapon tech that they've added into game and they could keep adding things in in that sort of process you know every like you know six months to a year add in a new module or something so it, it constantly gives us something to grind for you know there, there's ways and means that they could even reshuffle sort of the quicksilver missions to make them more interesting perhaps and the weekend missions to award you with stuff that's a little bit more sort of limited edition and seasonal perhaps you know there's all sorts that they could do and i'm there's endless po there's still endless potential in no man's sky you know, let's just put it that way and everybody's got their ideas everybody's got sort of things that they would say oh they could do this or oh, they could do that and they're freaking right there's so much that hello games could do and i'm hoping that 2023 remains a big year for hello games and there is a good reason why i'm saying i'm hoping that it remains a big year for hello games so let me just jump back over to my reaction cam for a second people and let's go back and over to the old twitter verse shall we peeps because inside of the tweet that i actually did and let's go back to that back to my tweet so here we go this is it so there's some other great procedurally based exploration games coming this year check out these two for example one is under a rock i'll uh, click that we'd open it in a new tab boom and the other is nightingale i right click that and I open that in a new tab. And I put, then there is Starfield. And I think everybody knows what Starfield is, but if you don't, I'll right click that too. And there we go, boom. For Hello Games to place in the charts this year, it's going to be a fun year for them. It really is. They've got their work cut out for them. Okay, so under a rock. When you scroll down on under a rock, you're going to see that it's made in Unreal Engine 5. And look at this. It looks freaking sublime, doesn't it? So, yes, this is using like, Lumen and it's also using Nanites. And Nanites is for polygons and all that sort of shenanigans. Whereas Lumen is for the lighting effects and real ambient lighting. And it looks freaking beautiful. I mean, look at that. It's got dynamic weather. It's got base building. You can create your own character in this to run the sort of world. Now, the beauty of this game is a bit like Jules Verne. Journey to the the center of the earth you're spawned into a procedurally generated area and as you're going around your sort of world you catalog the beasts that you come across and the flora that you come across and all your discoveries once you escaped this sort of you know journey to the center of the jules verne universe that you're trapped in like bernuda triangle type stuff i don't know hollow earth whatever you want to call it once you get back to good old blighty you can share your discoveries and climb the pages of notoriety in history depending on how well you've done it looks freaking good i think Think it's got a lot of replayability factor in that because you want to try and better what you did last time maybe make another character jump right in there's caves that are procedurally generated as well that sort of act as dungeons and give you rare resources and all sorts of other things so yes i'm very excited very excited for um, under a rock okay the next one i'm excited for is nightingale now you've probably heard me sound off about nightingale quite a lot so nightingale itself is another procedurally generated sort of world that um yeah it's freaking ace because they've got a portal system as you go over to the portals you put in what are called realm cards that look like tarot cards so if you've got one that's got a picture of a swamp on it and you put that in there you put in five total to generate what's going to appear on the opposite side of the portal so you might have one with swamps on you might have one with a picture of a sun on it that means that it's going to be perpetual sunlight or whatever but you put those in it generates a world on the opposite side of the portal now the aim of this game is you need to find yourself a place that's a sanctuary it's called nightingale the actual place you're finding which is like a giant city created by nicholas tesla or something it's got these tesla coils around the outside anyway i don't know whether he made it but i love the fact that this is made in a steampunky victorian universe I mean, look, I'm wearing a steampunk hat. I'll probably dress up for this one to get fully immersed into it anyway. Yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. So the boxes that I like to be ticked when I'm picking up a new game, or at least to get excited for, is this open world. It's got massive creatures in, and this definitely delivers on the massive creature front as well, people in the viewer verse. If I just scroll down here, you're probably going to see a massive creature. But there's some massive creatures that turn up if you're disturbing the environment and, and grabbing too many resources. Like there's a giant tree ant that will turn up if you're cutting down too many 
trees or there is an actual freaking giant i mean look at him yes big freaking giant you can actually ha tame them i believe or well, i've seen interactions where he's going down and picking people up on his hand or whatever but i've seen others where he's smashing bases which is freaking cool i mean look at that freaking beast that's turned up in that swamp area so yeah you can actually put in realm cards for hunting and things like that to up your resource gain but you might bring in big freaking gnarly creatures if you kill too many of them so i really like the premise of this one this one has really piqued my interest sadly though this one is based on pc only at the moment now hopefully if it's super popular hopefully they might consider bringing it to maybe other platforms but yeah it's it's one that's definitely on my cards of interesting and i've done a cup of tea video on this just the other day because i did a new development spotlight video and i covered that off so if you haven't seen it i'll put a link in the top corner just above my head there go hit that one up because it's freaking awesome and lastly i think everybody knows about starfield so Starfield is like a massive, great, big, open-worldy, well, open-universe type RPG game, but it isn't procedural, so the planets there are all handcrafted. Now, apparently, it's got a thousand-odd planets that you can put boots on the ground on, and whether they've got... <laughs> loads of fauna on or fauna or whatever is is something that we don't really know as yet i mean some of the actual video footage that they have put out there though for starfield does sort of hint at there is going to be quite large fauna inside of this game i mean there is images of like giant freaking creatures and things like that in this game so yeah i'm hoping though with there is there is a thousand odd planets that you can land on i want to land on those planets because even inside of the game footage you see them scanning a rock and it comes up and it says how many fauna are on that planet well i just want to catalog the resources of a planet whether the planet's worth landing on or not and whether it's got any fauna on worth sort of looking at or anything like that so that's the sort of thing that i want to do inside a starfield i'm probably going to have to play through some of the story before i can get into doing some of that boots on the ground exploration-y type stuff but that's kind of what I want to deliver into the verse but yeah I may have to go through some of the story before I get there and I can't actually wait for this now this has been delayed a couple of times already and it may get delayed even more there is supposed to be a Bethesda show coming fairly soon that's supposed to showcase Starfield in in all of its glory yet you know even that there's no whisper of when that's going to happen and i keep checking over here to see whether there's been any sort of update on that and that there's nothing there really is nothing out there right now it's freaking a dry space it really is anyhow people talking about dry space that um, brings me back all the way round to freaking no man's sky and hello games now there's two games there nightingale and also under a rock which i feel do a lot of the elements that no man's sky does now sean murray and hello games and the team want to get their game top of the steam charts again they've got some proper exciting competition this year they've got to pull it out of the freaking bag and also they've got starfield not quite i wouldn't say as exciting as a competitor because it hasn't got the procedural element but that game is going to freaking sell like hot cakes let's face it and that on sales alone it's probably going to be top of the steam charts whether it stays there is another thing because we know that bethesda games are usually riddled with freaking bugs no matter how much work they put into them um but yeah we <laughs> we shall see people we shall see but there we go i don't want to go off on too much of a tangent and and go into crazy town but if there is to be an update to no man's sky i'm really hoping that they do bring a bit of love to some of those exotic biomes and planets and the only reason i'm putting that out there is because of sean's retweet of that picture which is a little bit weird but um i think that's diving into it far too deep hence my speculation idea hat on right now people yes but you never know you never know with sean of the murrays and considering that they've broke all patterns and all molds when they did the whole waypoint thing and um broke the tradition of a yearly large update i mean was leviathan it or um, whatever endurance maybe i mean that is what sean murray's pinned isn't it sean murray pins the big update of the year and his pinned update of the year is endurance it wasn't waypoint that he pinned so maybe that was our big update of last year was it a massive one it was a massive one for freighter overhaul and base parts and bits and bobs for the actual freighter but no i wouldn't say that was as it's not on par with the likes of next or beyond or origins was it um so yeah there we go people that's that's pretty much everything. oh I'm, i ought to show you what I'm, i've got on screen shouldn't i really here we go 
That's what I've got on screen. So there's his pinned comment right there. No Man's Sky, insurance, and uh, there, there we are. That's that's pretty much it. He he just pins he pins the big one each year normally, um, but this last year I don't think there really was a a big update. Truth be told, and um, I'm really hoping that this year, because of that, maybe we might be in for something super big and super special, something that caps off and finishes maybe No Man's Sky, or or at least sort of rounds it off, and maybe Hello Games might do an announcement about their next title the next ambitious game that they're working on because let's face it that's still something that the curtain needs to be drawn back on we need to understand what they're doing there don't we maybe that might have something that might come up against unreal engine and deliver something in that's graphically as impressive as those two games that i showed you earlier nightingale and under a rock go check those games out if they tantalize you they're definitely on my radar until next time people salute mondo goodbye goodbye and goodbye again